Okay, let's pray together. Our gracious Father, we had no hope we were on the way to eternal hell. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we were saved. And now we have a hope of joining you in eternal heaven. So Lord, thank you so much for giving us hope and peace in our heart. No matter what happens, we know we can trust you. And you are always good and you love, you love us. So Lord, thank you so much for gathering us here again so that we can listen to your word and we can come to know you better and we can please you and glorify you in our Christian life. Especially, we are preparing for the uh, online summer retreat in August. Even though we cannot gather in Gongju Retreat Center, we are praying and we are trying to have this online uh, summer retreat. So Lord, please guide us and lead us and give us a chance to, to share this good news with uh, others so that we can have many fruits this time too. Uh, for those who are not here yet, please bring them here so we can be together. And from the beginning to the end, I commit the rest of time unto your mighty hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's turn to uh, First Chronicles, chapter 19. Verses 1 to 5, First Chronicle, chapter 19, verses 1 to 5. Uh, shall we read it together? It happened after this that Nahash, the king of the people of Ammon, died, and his son reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanan, the son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. So David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father, and David's servants came to Hanan in the land of the people of Ammon to comfort him. And the princess of the people of Ammon said to Hanun, Do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Did his servant not come to you to search and to overthrow and to spy out the land? Therefore Hanun took David's servants, shaved them, and cut off their garments in the middle at their buttocks and sent them away. Then some went and told David about the men, and he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Wait at Jericho until your beards have grown, and then return. Um, last week, um, I had a Bible seminar in Korean language in Swan Church, and I believe we have to listen again and again to the Bible seminar to to make sure uh, our faith is right in the eyes of God. There was a uh, one Korean sister living in the States, America. She was watching the Bible seminar every day. Right after I finished the seminar, every day she sent me the cacao message saying that thank you or something like that. But on the last day, I was surprised because she said that, Oh, I thought if I sin after salvation, I will go to hell. So I was thinking, I was thinking Oh, this is uh, strange. Right? We all know that uh, all our sins have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ eternally. So after salvation, when we make a mistake, we are not going to hell. Uh, will be disciplined. Uh, we call it chastisement according to the Bible. Like uh, God becomes our father, so as father disciplines his children, God will discipline us in this world, right? In, in, while we are living here. He will never send us to hell for those mistakes because they are already covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. So anyway, I was a uh, kind of a uh, surprised to, to hear her reaction because it looks like uh, her salvation was not uh, really uh, complete actually. So I was glad that he could, she could join. Uh, I mean, she watched it 
online every day. So somehow I was thinking that even though uh, many are suffering and then uh, actually the coronavirus is getting worse and worse, uh, as you see, uh, it's uh, spreading so rapidly. In India, uh, I found that every day more than 45,000 uh, new cases are confirmed and it's a serious condition. Um, so many are suffering and it's getting worse, but uh, also uh, in this situation, uh, because of the technology and because uh, we try many things, uh, some are benefiting actually. And regarding this uh, summer retreat, online summer retreat, I think that maybe uh, some people, they don't want to come to our retreat center ever. They, some people say that I will never step into a church building. Like uh, they don't want to come basically. So I was uh, thinking that maybe this time when we have this online uh, summer retreat, we can go to their place, like uh, you know, our relatives or friends, right? We can go to their place or we can invite them to our place and then just uh, play the online uh, seminar and watch, watch it together, actually. And they, uh, somehow those who do not want to come to the church building, they might listen in that way too. So we never know. Uh, these days, uh, the pastors of Swan Church, we are gathering all the time and discussing and praying and then trying to somehow uh, uh, take advantage of um, this situation. Because anyway, we cannot meet in Gongju Ritual Center. Uh, I feel very sorry about it because, as you know, we built very nice building and then we used just one time last year and then this year we are expecting to have more people in Richard Center with a new building. Actually they are building new new one too for the accommodation. So it looks like uh, now when the new 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 people come we can give them like a room, not like the big space uh, everyone sleeping together, right? So it will be much better uh, for those newcomers but maybe we have to pray uh, next year uh, when the uh, coronavirus. We have to pray actually when it subsides, then we can we can use that ritual center. So let's pray because uh, we Christians cannot just um, um, you know be silent because we know that this coronavirus is one of the sign of Jesus' second coming, and then uh, surprisingly last week when uh, we had a Bible seminar, there was a uh, one person who came regularly. I was surprised because uh, these days nobody wants to come to church building, they say. How can you go to the church building, right? Church building became like an enemy to uh, some people, so they, they, they don't want to come. But there was a young man who came every day and he got saved. So I was surprised there because I think that even now there are people who want to, who want to uh, find the truth, who want to uh, listen to the Word of God. So I was really encouraged. Uh, last week. Uh, today, I like to talk about how to know God and some misunderstanding about God among people. And we just read some part from First Chronicle, chapter nineteen. What happened was uh, the king of Ammon, uh, Nahash, died. It looks like. Nahash helped David before, maybe uh, when David was on the run, um, he got some help, favor from King Nahash of Ammon. And uh, when Nahash died, his son Hanun became king and he was reigning and uh, in verse 2, David said, I will show kindness to Hanun, the son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. So uh, David had a very good intention of showing kindness to to the death of the Nahash by sending some messengers uh, to, to comfort his son, Hanun. The problem is, verse 3, the princess of the people of Ammon said to Hanun, this princess uh, looks like a, like a high rank officials, those who are assisting the king, new king, they sent, verse 3, do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Did his servant not 
come to you to search and to overthrow and uh, to spy out the land? Actually, it happened quite often, long time ago, right? Do you remember last time uh, I was talking about Hezekiah and the people from Babylon came and what did they see? Instead of the grace of God and blessing of God, Hezekiah was showing all the treasures of uh, Judah. And that's why later the Babylonians came and took everything away, right? So uh, when the messengers come, uh, sometimes they are just spying out, you know, they are not coming uh, with good intention, but they they check out here and there and they see whether there is any opportunity to attack this uh, nation. So they were, they were saying that these princess saying that, oh, king, you know, that these people, messengers, they didn't come to comfort you. They came to spy out the land. So that's why in verse 4, Hanun took uh, David's servant and put them to great shame by shaving them and even the cutting the garments in the middle at their buttocks. I think that means that uh, their buttocks were shown, right? That part. So it was a great shame. So these messengers, they couldn't come back uh, right to Jerusalem because uh, in that condition they couldn't they, they, they felt so ashamed. So in verse 5, uh, David said, King David said, You stay at Jericho until your beards have grown. Of course, he, he must have sent some new clothes for them, right? Uh, by the way, in Jericho, uh, the archaeologists found some, uh, some, you know, that after Jericho was destroyed by uh, Joshua, uh, Joshua cursed Jericho so that nobody would build. Uh, Jericho again. Of course, later uh, it was built, and then uh, even this time, the temporary building they used were found by archaeologists in Jericho. So anyway, here what we have to think about is that Hanun, the son, he misunderstood David. David, he represents Jesus Christ in the Bible, actually. Whoever blesses David, they are blessed. Whoever curses David, they are cursed. Uh, think about Abigail, the, the wife of Nabal. She was treating David very well by supplying the food, and then she knew that, she believed actually, God will bless David. Right? So those who treated David well, they were blessed all the time. But as you see, there were some people in the Bible who didn't really uh, know uh, that God was blessing David. Like uh, Michael, the wife of David, she didn't follow David. She stayed in the palace. Later she married another man. Even though she was uh, taken back to David later uh, as uh, David's wife, but uh, she didn't have no, she had no children because her heart was somehow separated from David. Okay? If Michael had known that David would become king for sure, she would follow, she would have followed David wherever she, he went. But she didn't. She just stayed. Um, Ahitophel, maybe you heard his name. He was the, um, closest friend, one of the closest friend of uh, David. But when Absalom, he stood against David, uh, Ahithophel, he sided with Absalom, the, of David's king, right? Let, let's turn to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 15. 2 Samuel chapter 15. Verse 31, Second Samuel, chapter 15, verse 31. Then someone told David, saying, Ahitophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. This Ahithophel was very close to David, by the way, and he was a very wise man. That's why uh, David was worried when he heard that Ahithophel joined Absalom. 
right? And then he was praying, God, please turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. And that's what happened later. And Ahithophel hanged himself. He killed himself because his advice was not accepted by Absalom, right? This Ahithophel, even though he was very close to David, he didn't know that God was blessing David, right? So it's uh, again misunderstanding, right? So um, we have to know that what is God's plan and uh, how to obey God's will and why everything is happening and we have to know God better actually. Um, why we are reading the Bible? Because uh, especially those people who do not believe in God, they, they have a misunderstanding about God. That's why. Some, somebody was saying like this, in the flood, in the Noah's flood, even the little children died or not, they all died actually. And then they were saying, how could God kill these little children, innocent children? I hear that many times because in the Bible sometimes God commanded Israelites to kill everyone in the city or even the Noah's flood, for example. Uh, even the little children all died except Noah's family, right? And think about this one. First of all, according to the Bible, no one is innocent. No one is innocent. Even the children, they are sinners. Okay, we are sinners and children are sinners and uh, we should all face the judgment. Don't think that children are innocent. Okay, we know that uh, as soon as they start speaking, they speak lies and then they have their own this evil mind. And then one more important thing is in the time of Noah, the door of the Noah's ark was open to everyone. Nobody stopped them from coming, right? Even the children, if they wanted, they could come. Nobody. Nobody would say no, right? Actually, Noah, according to the Bible, he was a preacher. He was a preacher of righteousness, the Bible says. And then he was preaching to people that, please come, please come, right? Join. This is the only way you can survive this flood. But the children didn't come. Maybe their parents uh, stopped them from coming. Which means that their parents were evil. Right? So, sometimes people are accusing God falsely because uh, they are Have you heard this story that uh, Madame Curie, who won the Nobel Prize, right? She, when she was young, her mother didn't show much affection to her. Actually, she, her mother didn't hug, hug, uh, uh, give her hug often. So she was thinking that, oh, maybe my mother doesn't love me, but later after the death of her mother, she found out uh, her mother had the TB. You know TB, tuberculosis, the, the disease in her lung, which is uh, contagious actually. So that's why, that's why uh, her mother was keeping Madame Curie away, huh? because uh, she didn't want to uh, give the disease to her, her, her daughter, Madame Curie. It was a misunderstanding, right? Suppose there's a big lion, uh, he got some splinter in his uh, paw and suffering, right? Uh, it's getting worse and worse and then you want to help the lion. If you think the lion, when you approach the lion, he will understand you are coming to kill him or not. The lion has no idea, he, he tried to attack you. So that, this is the problem, right? So sometimes uh, when we try to uh, preach the gospel to the unbelievers, this is what happens. Right? People do not understand our good intention and they don't know the will of God. That's why they say no and they reject us. Right? So many people misunderstand God and uh, I will give you some point about what what way, in what way people Misunderstand God and what is the true purpose of God will share. So, firstly, uh, many people think that God is like us. God is like a human. Okay? 
That's the, uh, one of the primary misunderstanding. Uh, that's why, you know, even some people think that God is like a very elderly man, right? They, 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 they say, I saw God in my dream, and when we ask them, they say, Oh, he appeared like a very elderly man with white uh, hair and very wise, right? Uh, you ask the people from Africa, and they would say that their God is black, right? Because they have their own idea, right? So, they think that God is like us. And even sometimes we Christians, we, we misunderstand that way. Okay? God is not like us. Okay? God is righteous. Which means God doesn't allow even one single sin. Okay? Among people, we think it's okay. You know, like we accept each other and then we just uh, forgive uh, each other, but God is not like that. Let's turn to Numbers, chapter 23, Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19, Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19, let's read it together. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said that will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Whatever he says, he does. Whatever he promises, he keeps it. The promises. God is not like man. Okay? Um, Whatever he says, he keeps it. And that's why we can be sure about our salvation, actually. Don't you think sometimes that uh, when you make mistakes again and again, especially the same mistake as a Christian, uh, we want to uh, somehow, some bad habit or some sin, which uh, we are like uh, somehow addicted to or you know, we keep committing some sin. So when we look at ourselves committing the same sin and mistakes again and again, sometimes we cannot forgive ourselves. You know? What kind of person I am? You know? I, keep, I keep making the same mistake again and again. And I feel pity myself, and I cannot even love myself, right? And Sometimes we think that, oh, how can God love us in this condition? Um, the good thing is, God's love for you never changes. Okay. This is interesting. You know, God never changes. Some people say, well, God changed his mind when Jonah went to Nineveh and preached the word of God. God changed his mind. God is the same all the time. People change. And God treats them differently, of course. God, God is gracious. First Samuel, uh, first Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15. Verse 29. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 29. And also, the strength of Israel will not lie nor relent, for he is not a man that he should relent. Uh, relent, this word is translated as um, change his mind in New uh, Living Translation. I think that's much easier to understand, so let me read it again. And also, the strength of Israel will not lie nor change his mind. For he is not a man that he should change his mind. So he never changes his mind, basically. Okay? God never changes his mind, and he is not like he is not like uh, man. Okay? So let's remember. Uh, sometimes we, we make a God so small, like us, right? We think that uh, you know, God will become angry easily. God will hate us. God never hates you. Okay? And 
because of this uh, misunderstanding. Think about it, you know. God created the whole universe, and we are very small. Um, the Bible says, the sky is like a chair for him. The earth is like a footstool. You know footstool? Uh, the place you put your feet. So this earth is like a footstool for God. So God's mind is so huge, and He never changes, right? Psalm number 50. Psalm number 50, verse 21. 50, 5, 0. Psalm number 50, verse 21. Let me read. These things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Sometimes God is silent because God is long-suffering. But don't take that as his um, like a forgiveness. Okay? The sin will be judged no matter what. So these things you have done and I kept silent because God has a broad mind. He is silent. You thought that I was altogether like you. So this mistake. You think that God is like us, human. But I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. In this world, even in the court, court, right? There is injustice, right? Those who have money, those who are rich, somehow they uh, have some influence on the people, so they get uh, somehow they don't pay for their sin. But God is not like that. Uh, so, don't think that God is like us. Secondly, some people think that God always takes something from us. Like uh, God is as commanding us to do this and do that. You know, one of the reasons why people don't want to come to church is uh, they say that, Oh, if I become Christian, on Sundays I cannot go to this place, that place, to enjoy and uh, to rest. I have to come to the church every Sunday, and you know, I have no free time there. Right? Well, I believe that they don't understand what happens to them. as a Christian. Our real happiness, our real pleasure, is when we are together. We you know that. I think you know that. Uh, whatever we enjoy in this world is passive. Okay, passive. Um, by the way, it's, uh, coming to the church on Sundays is not in the Bible. It's not the law. Even though in early church time, from the early churches, the Christians were meeting on Sundays. Because on Sundays the day when Jesus resurrected, right? And it's good because we do not work on Sunday, we get together, we listen to the Word of God, and then we have fellowship. It's all voluntary. Uh, don't think that, oh, if I don't come to Sunday, I'm breaking the God's law. No. There's no law in the Bible. Of course, we see the tradition of a Christian's meeting on Sundays, but that's not the law. Law means that if you break it, there's a punishment. Okay? Don't think that if you don't come to the church, you'll be punished. By the way, as you know, in Nepal, where the people uh, uh, are not working on Saturdays, not Sunday, they work on Sunday. Okay? They gather in the church on Saturdays. Okay. We are get, coming to the church not to keep the law, but because uh, we really want to come and praise God. And So what I'm saying is, this is our pleasure. Okay? This is our happiness. Um, by the way, God knows better than us. He knows what is the best for us. If you follow the commandment of God in the Bible, you'll find yourself much happier than uh, when you do whatever you want to do. Actually. Let's turn to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 25. Acts chapter 17, verse 25. 
let's read it together. Nor is he worshipped with man's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. Without God, we cannot exist, actually. He's the one who gave us life, and we maintain our life because of Him. He gave us breath and all things we need. He gave us a family, He gave us the uh, what? education, He gave us a house, and He gave us the Bible, He gave us a, a salvation, right? He gave us a brother, sisters, and He will give us the heavenly kingdom. He is a giver. Giving and giving and giving. Have you read that book, uh, uh, A Giving Tree? It's really a nice story of uh, one tree loving one boy, right? This boy, when he was young, he put a swing in the uh, tree and he's playing there. And later when he had a girlfriend, he, they come together and they are putting the heart sign on the tree. And then later when he wanted to travel, Far away, the tree gave himself so that he can make a boat with a tree. So he went far, far away and then spending time. And then later he came back at the old age. And then you know what happens, right? There's a trump left. And then the, the tree is giving him the trump to sit on. So the, the boy now old, he's sitting there, taking rest. I was thinking, wow, that is what God is doing for us. Giving and giving and giving. Do you think that here he doesn't need anything? No, he doesn't need anything. He he created the whole universe. Uh, we came to this world naked. You know that, right? Whatever we enjoy is from God, right? Uh, every season there's a fruits and uh, you know the food, right? And uh, the mountains and rivers, uh, we go there and then we enjoy the views. All these things is by God's grace. Especially these days, uh, we are living in Korea, right? We have to thank God for being here actually, compared to other countries. I couldn't understand actually because many, uh, not many, some Koreans say hellish Korea. <laughs> they think that, they say that Korea is a hell, right? Uh, they never experienced hell, so that's why, um, um, I don't know. Thanking God is the first thing we have to do. That is the, the right attitude as Christians. If you have no thanksgiving in your, in your life, something is wrong. Actually. If you have a complaint, think about these Israelites. When they were in the wilderness, God gave them the manna, the food, right, water, but they complained again and again. This complaint is like um, it, people do not consider it as a serious sin, but it's very serious actually. It's about your heart, right? God actually owns everything. Let's turn to Psalm number 50. Psalm number 50, verse 9 to 12. Psalm number 50, verses 9 to 12. Let me read. Psalm number 50, verse 9 to 12. I will not take a bull from your house, nor ghosts out of your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the, and the cattle on a thousand hill. I know all the birds of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all is fullness. God says, I'm not asking you to give me anything. You know, he, he, actually, we are using God, what belongs to God. Right? Suppose you buy fish in the market, you pay some money. Is that the price for the fish? No. It's the Pride, what you pay is for the effort of the fishermen who catch the fish and then who, who transported the fish to the market. That's what you pay, not the fish itself, because fish is free. Right? God just uh, uh, gave the fish free. Right? So we, we are the one uh, who are enjoying everything God uh, prepared for us. And you know that 
John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son he gave his only begotten son finally that whoever believes in should not perish but have everlasting life he is giving and giving and giving finally he gave his own son right we have to remember that it's such a is, I can understand actually why God is giving again and again and then now we know that the eternal heaven is waiting for us okay how could how could we join this eternal heaven just by believing right just by believing not by paying money or not by praying just we listen to the word of God and accepted the love of God God said it's enough and then you will be with me in heaven eternally and the angels of course will serve you because they are the servers right so all these things God wants to give us again and again and one more misunderstanding is that God dwells in the church building only so some people when they come to the church they try to maintain their holiness so they try to behave nicely but when they uh, go out of the church building, they, they act like uh, there's no God, right? And that is wrong because God is omnipresent everywhere. Let's turn to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Actually, this Acts chapter 17 is very interesting because um, uh, Apostle Paul visited Athens and he saw some God with an inscription to the unknown God, right? Verse 22. Verse 22, let me read. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. Verse 23, Acts chapter 17, verse 23, For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. Apostle Paul is saying exactly the one you do not understand, the one you do not know, because this they said to the unknown God, right? And he is telling the people in Athens about the true God. And verse 24, let's, uh, uh, let's read it together. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. God doesn't just dwell in the temples, but God is with you everywhere. As a Christian, actually, do you know that what you do when you are alone, that shows what kind of Christian you are. Okay, We come to church, you know, you might be a best Christian when there are other brothers and sisters, right? But what are you doing when you are alone, when, you are, when there's nobody, right? Then might show you true faith of yours because some they don't think that God is everywhere so when they are alone they think God doesn't watch them okay it's not true God is everywhere and that's why um, whether we are alone or whether we are together right if you remember that then that will be a real helper for your Christian life. So let me tell you, just like these people in Athens, people misunderstood God again and again. Even in the time of Jesus, some people came to Jesus and telling some, sharing their misunderstanding. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, uh, verses 23 to 28. Let me read Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 to 28. The same day the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses said that if a man dies having no children, his brother shall marry his wife 
and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers, the first died after he had married, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother, likewise the second also, and the third even to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died also. Verse 28, let's read it together. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. These Sadducees, interesting, they are the Jews, but they didn't believe there's a life after death. For them, this world was everything. Also, they believed only the first five books in the Bible, by Moses. We call it Pentateuch, five books. What are they? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Only they believe only these five books, not other books, right? And then um, they believe there's no resurrection. And for them, the world, this world was everything. And the reason why they believed that way was because of this example. This is not a real story. They made up this story, right? In Israel, God gave the command that if the brother dies without children, the wife will marry the next one. So that it was for to continue the family, by the way. It, it sounds strange to us because we don't practice it, but that was from the mercy of God at the time because uh, uh, this uh, woman without children right, and without husband, they are very miserable. So they say the seven brothers were there, the wife of the, the eldest one, she married all seven because uh, no children. And she, when she died, whose wife will she be? This is a big problem for them. That Jesus said, verse 29, Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken. You are mistaken. Not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. They had no idea. Right? First of all, they had no idea that when we go to heaven, there's no man, no woman. Right? You know that, right? So we'll be like an angel. Angel has no man, no woman, no male, no female, no baby angel, by the way. People have this baby angel in the Christmas card, which is wrong. There's no baby angel. Okay? Uh, this chubby angel, right? This cute, chubby angel. No, there's no, no such baby angel. So this is all misunderstanding, right? What happens is, when we are resurrected, Sisters, listen, uh, you don't have to do all this housework again, right? Because uh, sometimes I also feel it's unfair, right? Uh, wives do all the housework all the time. And, uh, well, one comfort for sisters is that uh, in the prison there are more men, but in the church there are more women, which means that, you know, um, because, no women, they tend to be saved more, <laughs> I found, right? And then, uh, because uh, I believe that many, many sisters uh, in the church, they will get much greater glory in the heaven uh, than brothers. Than brothers. Um, this is uh, their character, actually. Sisters, uh, they, uh, they tend to obey better, right? And then they are very caring. So they care for the brothers and sisters, and they always cook and prepare them something for others. I think there will be great reward for you, sisters. So, you know, uh, just just wait. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh, here another thing Jesus said is verse 32. Verse 31, 32. Let me read. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Right? This is amazing. This scripture is from Exodus, actually. Exodus. Why Jesus chose this scripture from Exodus? I told you. Said so this, they didn't believe all the Bible. Only the Pentateuch, first five books. There, Jesus picked one scripture saying, 
uh, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Um, when God says, I'm God of Abraham, by the way, Abraham, this was uh, what God told Moses. 500 years later, after uh, Abraham died, right? But here, when God says, I'm God of Abraham, which means uh, God is God of the living people, which means that Abraham was living the time, okay? Verse 33, And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. They were so surprised. They were so surprised. They were mistaken. Mistaken. Okay? Don't be mistaken. Why we are studying Bible again and again? Because we want to know God better and better, actually. We want to find out God's will in our life. And we want to uh, be comforted by God. We want to be strengthened by God. Because when you know who God is, what He's doing, you will be strengthened and encouraged. Do you remember Elisha? When this uh, Aram people came to catch him, they were... No, troops surrounding Dodan, the name of the city. His servant was discouraged because he thought that we'll be, we'll be dead soon because this uh, Aramean will kill us. But Elisha opened his eyes and showed the, the chariots of fire and all these uh, angels protecting them, right? So when we come to know better about God and His power and His love and His, His grace, we are strengthen. So let me tell you, so for some of the um, attributes of God, because um, we have to know better and better God. Okay? Um, God is always try to encourage us and help us and whenever we pray to God, He's ready to listen to our prayer and He wants to help us. Let's turn to Psalm number 50. Psalm number 50. Verse 15. Psalm number 50, verse 15. Let's read it together. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. God is not far away from us. He is always with us in our heart as the Holy Spirit entered our heart when we first believed. He is always trying to help us. You know, Jesus is praying for us. When we are uh, somehow, when we experience some difficult things, here, this is the promise of God. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. This is the promise of God. Don't trust people. People, you know, people, their heart changes and they, they are not so powerful. And then people say something in front of you, but, you know, in their heart. It's different from what they say. So let's turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. Let me read. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Basically, Israelites, they were saying, Why God, you do not listen to me? Why you don't care for us? Why you make us suffer so much? God, don't you care for us? Why Babylonians came and you know destroyed us and taken us as captivity? All these things. God says, why do you say, O Jacob, why do you say my way is hidden from the Lord and my just claim is passed over by my God? They, they were mistaken. Okay? Whatever happens to you and me is by God's grace. Sometimes we don't understand because you suffer and I suffer. But when you come to know 
Maybe later you'll find out everything happened for your good, right? Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to uh, 31. Let me read. Have you not known, have you not heard the, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, his understanding is unsearchable. Don't you know? God never faints, means God never becomes uh, tired, God never becomes powerless, right? And His understanding is unsearchable. He knows everything. Verse 29, He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, He increases strength. God will make you strong. That's true. God is there. He will be strengthening you. He will be encouraging you. Verse 30, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, I know some Christians, those somehow burned out. You know the term burned out? Like in the in your company, you work so hard, you're burned out. You have no strength at all left. And then you don't know what to do. You have no power to to carry on, basically. Okay? Burned out. Don't worry. God is our like a have you seen the commercial of Energizer, the battery, right? The burning is keep, you know, that drop. <laughs> the power goes on and on and on because uh, Energizer, right? The battery. God is our Energizer. You know? And God strengthens us. When we fall down, He lays us up. And He will give you strength and power to continue. That is the promise, right? Verse 31. Uh, let's read it together. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In my Christian life, I experienced many different kind of uh, things. And then sometimes, you know, I was discouraged too. But now, when I think about that time, uh, I found that it was good for me too because God made me humble at the time. You know, when you become powerless and when you are very disgraced, that's when you become so humble. When everything goes well, that's very dangerous for you, Christian, actually. Because when everything goes well, you become proud and then you don't really trust God. When do you pray more? When you are suffering and when you go through these difficult times, you pray more and more, you read the Bible more, and then the scripture you read that time really encourages you. It, it touches your heart uh, in a way which never happened before. But those who wait on the Lord, those who wait on the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. You'll be flying like an eagle. No, flying up, right? They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And you realize, ah. my Christian life is not my own. Okay, I live as a Christian because God is there helping me, encouraging me, strengthening me. On my own, I cannot do anything. And that is the secret of Christian life. Okay. Um, sometimes you see some Christians who are very faithful. You think uh, oh, they have some special ability? Well, they have uh, no special ability actually. The, what they found out is Christian life is not my own. Okay? We trust God. Okay? Uh, I remember in the story of the Pilgrim's Progress, right? Christian, the, the main character, he visited one house and then there was a furnace. The fire was burning there. Furnace, you know furnace that uh, in the house, the living room, the uh, wood is burning to keep that room warm. Furnace. And one person was uh, pouring water to extinguish the fire, but it was burning. Kep kept burning. So he, the Christian was wondering why this fire never become extinguished, never become put off. And then when he went 
Next room around the world, we found out somebody was pouring what? Oil. Oil. Keep pouring oil. Backside. With oil, even if the, the water was pouring on the fire, it was continu it continued to burn because of the oil, right? So that oil represents the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit gave us this um, the promise, Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Let's read it together. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Remember, God is there to give you whatever you need, he will give you, right? He who did not spare his own son, he even gave up on his son and he killed his son on our behalf. And he delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He, is, he wants to give all things to you. This is the promise of God. He never changes, right? Actually, we know that... Um, Jesus is praying for us. The Holy Spirit also encourages us all the time. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 14. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 14. Fear not, you worm Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. You see the word worm? Worm? Israel became like worm because a Babylon came and destroyed them and they were became prisoners of war and then they became like a worm. One day, you might feel like you are a worm too. So powerless. Nothing worse. I'm warm, warm. You know, I went to the uh, lake park. I think, uh, I mean, I'm going almost every day and then there's a worm, right? Especially when there's a uh, rain, the worm is on the road and then people just, uh, just tread on it and then they die, right? They don't even care, they don't even know and then the bird come and eat it and then very nice you know, meal for them, right? So worm means that Nobody cares for you, and then you are so powerless, but God says, Fear not, you worm Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, your Redeemer, the one who saved you, the Holy One of Israel, He will help you. Verse 10, let's read it together. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All these promises. So that's why we can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. I can do all things, not on my own, through Christ who strengthens me. That is what Apostle Paul said. I can do all things through Christ. Okay? So he wants to help us again and again, okay? So, let's remember uh, who God is, what He's doing for us, because He is always working for us. Let's turn to Psalm number 81. Psalm number 81. Psalm number 81, verse 1. Psalm number 81, verse 1. Let's read it together. Sing aloud to God our strengths. Make a joyful shout to the God of Jacob. We can sing and we can shout, right? Because joyful shout when we, when we know who our God is. In verse 10, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The rest of it, let's read it together. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. 
open your mouth wide. Now, William Carey, the Indian missionary, said, expect great things from God, you know, achieve great things for God. Each Christian, when we really trust God, and when God helps us, we can do great things for God. Okay? Uh, open your mouth wide, and I will feel it. You have a family members who are not safe yet, and you have some difficulties in your life, financial difficulty, family problem, all this problem. Open your mouth wide, and God says, "I will feel it." The problem is, let's go back to the First Chronicle chapter 19, the one we read in the beginning. First uh, Chronicle chapter 19, verse 3. First Chronicles chapter 19 verse 3 And the princess of the people of Ammon said to Hanun, Do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Did his servant not, not come to you to search and to overthrow and to spy out the land? There's a Satan always trying to uh, give this wrong idea. Actually, this princess is like a Satan between God and us. You know, we we want to try to trust God wholly, but the Satan is saying, "Do you think God cares for you? Right? Do you think God keeps His promises? Look at your condition. Nothing works, and it looks like God doesn't care for you. Right? So we have to remember." There's a Satan always trying to discourage us. Like this uh, princess who is... <laughs> later, what happened was there was a war between David and Hanun, right? Because of this... Uh, uh, no, he, he shamed this uh, servant. So there's a war and then Ammon was defeated. Right? If Hanun treated David's messengers well, they had a good relationship and then they they would be okay, right? But because of this misunderstanding and because of this advice of this uh, princess, they were there was a war and then Ammon was defeated. Okay? So let's remember knowing God is important. Sometimes uh, uh, it's, it's like this. God is like the sun but sometimes there's a cloud. So when the cloud covers the sun, you don't see the sun, right? And then you might have some doubt, and then you might be mistaken about God sometimes. But we come back to the Bible, and we read it. We remember the promises of God. And then when we know God better, it will really strengthen us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are very weak. We need your encouragement and strength all the time. And we found in the Bible that you promised to strengthen us all the time. Sometimes you feel, we feel we are so powerless, we cannot do anything, we cannot even lift our finger. But that time is when we have to pray to you because, Lord, you promised, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. So, Lord, help us so that we do not we do not look at ourselves, but we always trust you in our Christian life. And then I think we can achieve great things for you, Lord. There are many things we need to do before Jesus, Jesus comes and sometimes we feel like we are like a child. We cannot do anything. But Lord, as we learn about you more and more, help us to grow in our Christian life and strengthen us so that we can please and glorify you all the more in our life. So thank you so much for this encouragement and this strength. And I pray everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.